What's good? What's good, y'all? It's your boy Mars School, Mars School Media, and after a bunch of technical difficulties and a couple of issues off camera, I'm finally here with someone who I'm super excited to sit down with. She um is like great with she's great on the stage, and I just saw her voice is amazing. She's great. She's great at everything she does. She knows how to move her body. She knows how to get the fans involved. She's all the way from the North Shore. I'm with Teha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. That introduction, incredible. Thank you, thank you. I try, I try. I appreciate it. So, how, how are you feeling right now? We're fresh off of YTH Chris. Bro, right I am here. up, 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 up. I, the energy is fucking live as fuck right now. I am. That's amazing. I'm awake. I am very awake. I like I like to hear that. Yeah, no, I definitely um I definitely see why like, the energy and like the energy at YTH Fest was amazing. Like, is that your biggest show you've done? Yeah, and the fact that I performed like I was like third to last. That was like. Mm -hmm. You're you're you're, ah! a big, you're a big name. It sounds like you're a headliner. I, it felt like I was a headliner for a second. Mm -hmm. I think I was. I think you were. I like think you, I was. You were like the last three people to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah how it goes. Which I've never headlined a show before, so that was fucking sick as shit. Mm -hmm. what, was your, what was your favorite part about my TH Fest? Um, honestly, I just. I, I don't like I don't think I could like everything was fucking dope like the the environment the fact that everybody was like there to network and like mm -hmm. connect with each other and we're so supportive of everybody it was fucking dope. I freaking agree. And um, shout out, shout out to Don Don Zop. He was the person that hosted YTH Fest, and he even let a cameraman get on stage and do a couple songs. You know, we Bro. went crazy. You might see some footage coming from that later, but. More focus on this legend to um to my right. So like, where are you from? I am from the North Shore area, Ipswich, Massachusetts, specifically. Okay. Um, it's kind of like north of Boston, right on the coast. Okay, I know I know where that is. I, I went to Westwood State, so I meet a lot of people that are like from that area, kind of. Yeah. yeah. So that's really cool. So um, what was it like growing up over there? Um. Interesting. It was interesting. So my parents are split. I was half like in Chelsea, which is like right next to Boston, and then half in Ipswich, which is right next to the beach, all woods area. So it was like city, suburbs, split kind of vibes. And I felt like it was interesting growing up because I don't think I um, really felt like I fit in anywhere technically. Like at the end of the day, like I'm half Colombian and then half the time. It's just like two different mm -hmm. types of things. Like two different worlds. Two different worlds entirely. Hey, you stop. <laughs> you already know. If you've been watching the channel, you know about Big Cash Nasty back then. You might hear him. I'm going to edit him out, though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, like, what what did you prefer? Like, did you like living in the Chelsea or um, Ipswich more? Like, what was your vibe? I feel like I'm still kind of, like, going over that. Like, I am obsessed with me. I'm such, like, a weirdo when it comes to, like, being outside. Like, I will literally go hiking and camping by myself. Yeah, and, like, go on road trips and shit. But then there's nothing like, you know, like, city vibes. Because mm -hmm. everything is just so fast-paced and people are just different, you know? Like, and it's cool to see the diversity where, like, people mm -hmm. express themselves in such different ways. Whereas, like, the suburbs is kind of, like, chillin'. Five minutes, yeah. smoking weed on the coast, like not really much. But then we go to the city, and it's like, boom, it's different. It's different. <laughs> yeah. So where? Yeah, it's different. So where are you? On, so where are you um living now? Like you more in the? Are you more in the city or are you in the burbs? Now? I am mostly in the burbs, but making moves to go more into the city. That's what's up. So can you take me? So let's go back in time a little bit, like. What's like a young Teha cat like? Like, what's she doing? Like, were you like a little like you like might play sports or something? Hey, um, I played soccer for like thirteen years, mm. but I'm not good at it. Yeah, be decent. Uh, I'm not good at sports. Um, I was like a theater kid for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just kind of a nerd. Like, I feel like I got bullied a lot growing up, and wow. I I used to be like, yo, I don't get why I got bullied, whatever. But then I um was looking back at like old pictures. I was wearing like Twilight shirts mm -hmm. to school. Like with all three, like like Bella, Edward, 
Mm-hmm. That sort of thing. What's wrong with that? I was a Twilight fan too. I love Twilight. I was um well I only watched it the last. <laughs> well, and the streaming technology was not what it was, so like I, I had like bigger hair, and the demographic where I lived was predominantly Caucasian. <laughs> so being me, um, it was just different. So you're a Twilight fan. Are you Team Edward or Team Jacob? <sighs> I was Team Edward with the books, but Team Jacob in the movies because I feel like it was easier to spot that um, Edward is a little like controlling mm-hmm. in the movies. Like you can spot that in the movies, but in the books you're like, oh my god, this is so amazing. <laughs> right, right, right. And then Midnight Sun came out in 2020. I don't know how. We, I don't know what that is at that's all. That's Edward's perspective, and it just it's like he just sucks, man. He sucks. What do you mean? The whole book, he's like, I just want to kill her. And it's like... Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I'm I like, know is there any that. love? Do you actually love her? Or do you just like want to hate her? Wait, so he's not really a lover? He's just like, she just got good blood or I something? I don't fucking know. It seems like an addiction more than love. Well, you already know. Those teen romances are all about toxic relationships. But boom, like, let's get, in, let's get into a little bit on... When did you start making music? Like, how old are you? So I have been singing since I can remember. Mm-hmm. I got to say four or five years old. Okay. I was obsessed with Annie. That was the only movie I would watch mm-hmm. um, from like five to seven. Mm-hmm. You know, every word to every song. Um, but then I, you know, tried the whole band stuff in high school. Okay. Um, special choruses, what the fuck ever. Did you, did you play I, an instrument? I sang. I did play violin for eight years. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super random. Um, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, was a vocal major for like a semester. Okay. But, um, I started consistently making music, uh, for two years now. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. And um, what really inspired you to get into music? Was it just your background messing with everything, or you're just like they can do it now? Or do you see someone you know somebody? It just feels really good. Um, I feel like I get to like really low, low points, like emotionally. I have um, I don't know if it's like TMI. It's not really TMI. I'm a woman. I have a menstrual disorder, so like I get like extremely depressed and like feel very low at points and. Singing is one of those things that I just like, it like releases this like demon, especially when I'm like, yeah. yeah. I like that. I feel the same way. I feel like music is like an artistic expression, you know? Like, especially with like the music I'm trying to make now, I feel like it really comes from like the soul and like inside my heart. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a baby, my dog. I'm a hold for this interview. Yeah. Yeah, I really think you should. I feel like he wants to be with us. He loves us. If you want me to hold too, I'm like, what am I? You want to hold too? I don't want to hold up. You can hold up. It's anything you want. I'm serious. Hey, brother, brother. Appreciate you working with me. Thank you so much. But yeah, like, no, but like, that's actually really amazing. Like, can you speak more about actually about you playing the violin? Like, so you played for eight years. Was that something that you wanted to do, or was it like a parents thing? Like, um, what was that? So, in Ipswich, this is like the I don't I don't know if this is everywhere, but like. We got a choice in fourth grade to pick an instrument. Okay. And I really wanted to do the saxophone, actually, mm-hmm. but um, I am a people pleaser, or like mm-hmm. at least I used to be very much a people pleaser. And the teacher said that I had like a natural inclination to the violin, so I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I did it for eight years, and I was actually really good at it. Um, but I never wanted to do the violin. It was mm-hmm. kind of forced on me. But now I kind of regret it. I'm like, oh, I wish I still, I wish I stuck with it. Do you think you could pick up a violin right now and still play it? Shittily, but yes, I could probably play it. <laughs> Same way. I played the trombone from um, like fourth grade all the way to like I think eighth grade. And so I think I could still pick it up and do something. But right, it's right, sound right. Like... Do, you, do you? Yeah, of course, sure. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I love. I love some of that musical background. Like, do, do you think that plays into like your music now? Like I said before, like, do, do you think that inspired you to get into music or was it somebody else? I think I have genuinely always had this like weird, just like, 
I don't know. I I remember when I was younger, I didn't like to sing in front of anybody, not even my parents. Like it was definitely a closeted thing. People just like happen to hear me sometimes and they'd be like, yo, you got a voice. I didn't know I still I mean, you know, you're saying it's like I still don't know if I'm good. Mm -hmm. I just like I just like doing it and people was, like hype me up. You know? I would say you're pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. But um when I was younger, I remember the first song I ever sang to someone out loud was um, that song Get Out, Leave, or something by JoJo. I don't think I know that, but... Um, and I'm day for you, babe, so won't you come sit and talk to me? Mm -hmm. That one? I, I don't, I don't, really? I just think, it, I don't think I'm in that, I don't well, know. I, I like, don't know. I remember, like, it was my absolute best friend. I was like... Singing something, but I don't know if it's gonna sound good, mm -hmm. and I've been practicing it a lot, and I want to show you. So I literally put a blanket over myself. She was like oh, sitting next yeah. to me, <laughs> and I sang the song, and she was like, "Bro, you can sing." Mm -hmm. I was like, "I don't know," <laughs> but it's fun. It feels good. That's good. How long ago was that? That was like. Oh. Let's see when that song came out. I'm gonna look that up. Okay, oh, so then you've been, so so then you've always felt like that you've been feeling confident in your voice for a while then out of elementary school. Yeah, I've been singing for a really long time. That's what's up. But it's just like it just feels really good. Like mm -hmm. I to this day don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. So then what inspired you to like be like, okay, I'm gonna go from like just singing in front of my friends, doing the chorus, and then just hop in the studio and just make a song. Like, were you always writing music in the background? Yeah. Like, that's what that one was? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm always, yeah. I really like writing. That's okay. definitely a passion of mine. Like, I was, um, I've all, I have been, like, um, published in textbooks and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, like, my essays and stuff in college. Because I just, like, I, I don't know. My essays, like, growing up, ever since, like, elementary school, middle school, until obviously mm -hmm. now, I've always been, like, an example for the class. I've just oh, always had, like, a, I don't know, that's just... You're just good at school. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. And, um, so, like, what did you write about? Like, what was one of the things that you got, like, published in time? Well, so, that was my, um, it was a... One of my psychology classes, I hate that I can't. I love psychology. Yeah, sure. but basically it was a port my portfolio got published. Okay. Um, and it was all writing on like equity and equality, um, just like different social topics. Bye. And I feel like growing up in a predominantly white town, I got kind of like a unique experience. But not so unique. It's just like knowing the stuff that I went through, I'm very aware that like there is worse out there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the shit that I went through, I'm like, if I'm getting this, there are definitely people getting fucking worse. 100%. And so like, I feel like that's the unique perspective is like, I'm able to like, I got that from that, mm -hmm. which was, I, I appreciate it. Like yeah. I got bullied a lot, but like, I agree. Like, I feel like everything happened for a reason, and like everything that like happened in the past that makes you who you are today, you can either learn from it or you can just get mad. You know, like it's yeah. either get bitter or get better. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why I always say. So, um, speaking more into like the, making the music, what was the first song you recorded and put out? Waste my time. For real, that was the first. That one? was my first baby. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. That oh was, my god. That's a good debut. You definitely came out strong, dude. That as that was one of those songs where like I was just feeling some type of way and my homie was like, Alright, I have this beat. Let me know, like, what's good. And I was like, Oh like I was feeling some type of way. I was like, I just have been like asking these guys to waste my time. Like I'm literally asking you, waste my time. That's all I want. And then the beat dropped and I was like, waste my time. Mm -hmm. And then literally no, I was, that's, definitely my, that's definitely my favorite song of yours. That's the one I listen to. I'm like, yeah, you should go crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Nah. And actually, that was one thing I wanted to say is like, you definitely use like a lot of sex appeal in like your music and like on the stage when you're moving around and stuff. Like, do you feel like that's something that plays into your brand and like helps you just on like, like, like be more popular? Or that's not like you play up or that's just you? Um, it is interesting you're asking that because I feel like I've been like kind of dealing with that a lot recently where it's like I have a social media presence and I have like an artist presence. Mm -hmm. But me as a person, I feel like the songs and like the social media aspect, like me, like what I'm putting out there, it's energy that I put towards individual people. It's not so much like who I am as a person. It's like when I'm in those relationships, that's definitely how I am. But I am like very to myself. I am not act like I'm not out here like Yo, you, 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 you. Like, I'm very selective. You're selective, freaky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As fuck. Like. Nah, I feel you. Like, you gotta be the right person to bring it out. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I always make this joke because it's like, I. We were talking about this earlier. I'm 27. Yeah. But I, I feel like people. Yeah, I feel like good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I make a joke where it's like, I got facials. Mm-hmm. And that's. Because it's like the fountain of youth, your children, your unborn mm-hmm. children. Oh, you say okay. kids? Yeah. But I make that joke a lot, mm-hmm. but it's like nobody's actually, do, like, it's like one one person mm-hmm. that, like, I've been, like, you know what I mean? In that position, like, in that, like, presence of doing that with, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm not actually that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I feel, no, I feel, <laughs> Hey, but wait, but we all we all got crazy stories. Right? Exactly. Like, no, exactly, no, exactly, exactly. Like, no worry about. But um, who are some of the people that you look up to in the music industry? Well, Alicia Keys. Ooh, I, I feel like that's that. my first. Like that was like. Mm. I actually have a ticket. I bought a ticket to Alicia Keys by myself. Mm-hmm. For and I've had it for two years now because it was supposed to be in 2020, but everything. Down. And she just never came back for it? And then she didn't come back in 2021. She It's rescheduled for August 8th of 2022. Okay. That's, that's soon. So I know. I'm so excited. Heck yeah. I know. I ha- I'm, I've only seen her once. I mm-hmm. think it was like in ninth grade or eighth mm-hmm. grade. Um, but she's always been like a huge, huge inspiration to me. I just, I don't know. Like, the way that she plays the keys, the way that she sings, how she carries herself. She's just so cool. That's dope. Yeah, she's definitely, she's definitely a talented person. Like, I like her music a lot, too. Like, I listen to, like, a lot of different music, and she's definitely, she's definitely in the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, one of my um, good homies, he, like, shoots for just, like, mad people, and he mm-hmm. ended up shooting for her at mm-hmm. this, like, commercial or whatever, and he, um, you know, they get a lot of stuff for their trailer, and then they leave, and they don't take any of the stuff, because they were running for every trailer or whatever, so he went in and got the incense holder and incense from her trailer, and gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Hey, souvenir, screw it. Well, no, and I feel like it's, like, she's, like, my supreme, you know, (laughs) like, I burned that, and I feel like she's giving me energy. Mm -hmm. And you still have it? Yeah, oh my god, yeah. That's yeah. great. I love yeah. that. No, I don't burn them often. Okay. Hey, of course, you gotta make it last long. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, where do you see yourself going with the music? Like five years from now, where do you see Taya? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I haven't really been like. This is one of those things mm-hmm. that I've definitely been more going with it mm-hmm. because. Without expectation, everything just seems great. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, planning it out, I don't know, this is a passion. This is a passion project. I'm not trying to, like, like, I'm half pursuing it, Mm -hmm. but mostly just, like, enjoying it and, Mm -hmm. like, doing whatever I want with it and going with the art Mm -hmm. aspect of it because I feel like you're most successful when you're enjoying it the most. And I agree. Exactly. So like, the way you're saying it is just like, even if there's no money involved, you love making music. So yeah. You're gonna do it no matter what. Yeah. But if you end up being in the Nicki Minaj, hey, 
was good. People fucking be mad, right? I like even performing in a festival. Like that's something I've always wanted to do, mm -hmm. and like I want to do more of that for sure. Like I would love to be at like Electric Forest or something like wow. something like that. You know where it's like. So it sounds like you're into like different kinds of music too. Then, uh, so many different. I people say everything, but I mean like everything. Okay. So if you, if you sat in the car right now, what's and I have people in the aisle, what's, what's what's one of the song that's playing? What's the, what are you I think Bad Bunny would be playing right now. Okay. Okay. Um, that's what's up, man. Let me see. What was I just listening to? I need that to be a talented artist and see what you got. Oh, also. Um, that JoJo song came out in 2004, so that was fourth grade. Okay, okay. That's when I first sang. That's what's up. So you've, been, you've been at it for a while. I've been making music for a long time, too. Just not, not good. It was very crappy. It was very crappy back in the day. But, you know, everything takes time. Like, would you say that, like, there was a good learning curve for you, actually? Like, you had to take a while to improve? Or do you, what do you say? I mean, I feel like you're always improving. Mm -hmm. There's never going to be a point where you're not getting better mm -hmm. so I feel like I did I feel like I did take like a fat fucking break which I regret so mm -hmm. hard because I feel like I'd be a lot further fat like at a younger age but you know sometimes things just happen and like what is time time to like I it's we made it all up you know mm -hmm. nothing is easy Right, time is relative. And um, since moving on from that, like, I've met you at two Western Mass performances now. And, like, being from the North Shore, like, it's kind of far away drive. Like, how did you get tapped into this area? Um, I'm trying to think. I met, so, and then how did I get, so, Joshua October, that's his name on Instagram, reached out to me. Okay. about a show for Belize, mm -hmm. and that was in a town that I can't remember, but it was also like central western mm -hmm. area, um, and that was the first show that I ever performed as Teja, okay. and then from there I met Amir. That's my guy, Amir. Shouts out, Amir. Mm -hmm. We love you. Um, and then he got me on that show. Okay. And then from there, actually, I think even before that, um, there was like a, I think Donzio put out like a tag artists mm -hmm. type thing, and mad people tagged me okay. on the post, and Phoenix, Jack, and I think Amir were like, yo, we like, got you in there, and like, stuck our necks out for you, whatever, and I was like, and that's what the what what that sounds like. For uh, this one, oh, for Amir this one. no Amir stuck his neck out for the what it sounds like, and okay. then Phoenix for this one. I was like, y'all are fucking. Ugh. That's what's up. And I feel like from there I've made so many connections. I it's yeah. like there are so many talented artists around here. Mm -hmm. It's um, crazy. Like there's enough where we could like definitely do something on the coast. Like we could probably like set something up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just gotta we just gotta make it happen. I feel like it's good to get stuff going over here though, because I feel like people feel like Western Mass doesn't exist. Yeah. Like I went to Westville State, like I said, and like all the people from like Eastern Mass people like, what the fuck is Western Mass? No, like, literally. This is my first I time have being no over idea, here. yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> is so what's your is does it like is it different for your expectations? Like what do you expect when you came to Western Mass? Um, YTH Fest, totally different. No I had no idea what I was going into at all, um, that was fucking dope as shit. That was dope as fuck. Like, what it may sounds like, I was, it reminded me actually of like when I was in high school and I was going to shows like that, like where it was like all local artists and you go to basement shows and like shit like that. Yeah. Um, that's what that vibe was like. I really liked it actually. Um, yeah. And then obviously met like mad people there too, so that was sick. Like, this was just in the, another experience. That's what I feel. This is crazy. You know, YTH was definitely fire. Who I was there. We survived it. Like we were there from the first performance to the last. Yeah. Not a lot of people yeah. did that. Yeah. Like, 
Thank you. And, um, we did do that. Thank you. So transition a little bit out, out of the music. Um, you're actually pretty active doing like a lot of other stuff. I saw you were actually like modeling. Like, how did that come together? Like, what was that? Yep, yep, yep. Um, so one of the homies that's actually like a really dope rapper out in Boston, like Seaport, he Seaport Mafia shouts out. Um, <laughs> yeah, he asked if I wanted to be in a fashion show. Sick as fuck. That was the first runway that I've ever um, walked on. But I've been like kind of modeling, like freelance modeling for a while. Um, That's cool. I just got out, so I don't know. So do you see like do you see more runway modeling in the future? Just any more modeling? That future? would be sick. I would honestly be so down for that. I actually had a photographer reach out to me recently, telling me about like different open opportunities, like open mm -hmm. shoots, which is like great for networking. So definitely gonna probably go into more of that. Like I, I don't know everything. I don't know art, all forms of art. I'm mm -hmm. like yes, that's what I want to be doing all the time. Hey, you're just a creative person. Yeah. You just like don't don't stifle for yourself. Don't put yourself in a box. Whatever comes to you is meant to come to you. Just go for it. You know, mm -hmm. see what you can do. Like you might be the next um, what's her name? Cassie, Kathy Ireland, right? Yeah, who knows. But, um, and also too, like I saw you were, like on a weird game show. Like, what was what's up with that? Like, that looked pretty interesting. Can you talk to me about that? I was on a weed game show. Um, we smoked a joint and had to go through different rounds and stuff. Um, I was very close to winning. Okay. I was. I was. I rolled the best joint, and that's what pushed me, you know, further into the game show. But then, uh. Honestly, like, I'm still kind of peeved about it, I'm not gonna lie. He had already weighed an ounce out, so he knew what to do. And I had to eye an ounce. And I wasn't thinking, you know, the way that he was thinking, because he had already, had already done it. Um, so I lost. But, Sorry. yeah, I am a cannabis enthusiast. I would call myself a cannabis connoisseur, mm. if you will. Can you spell it? Um, no. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I can't it. it's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity to create equity within different communities through cannabis. I think it's great for healthcare, like more than just getting high, like more than just like, I like weed. Like, I think it's a great opportunity and I'm glad that it's becoming legal. It should be federally legal, but <laughs> Supreme Court's doing a bunch of wild shit recently. Bunch of so. wild shit. Yeah, the Supreme Court. <laughs> Fuck those bitches! Mm. Mm. Yes, but can we see a future where Teha owns a weed shop then? Um, actually, yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about, um... So it's like a concept, Buds and Brews, like coffee okay. and weed. Okay. I fucking love coffee. Alright. And I love weed. I like that. Well, be on the lookout for Buds and Brews. It's coming. And, um, wake and bake, baby! Wake and bake. And um, before you like, is there anything that you want to shout out? Is there anything you want to drop on the fans? Anything you want to let people know, like while you're here, like what's up? I don't know. You got yeah. any friends that helped you on your musical journey? Anybody that was just super lit up YTH? Anything? I know. They, well, it's just like there's so much. There's so much to be <laughs> grateful for. It's like, you know, some days are hard, and like they just make you want to like. But today was a great day, All and right. I think it kind of like re-sparked everything, the whole creative, I don't know, life is good, and uh, everybody should uh, take a second and like breathe and reevaluate because nothing means anything, you know, everything is meaningless. We made all of this up, so it's really like, what are the social ties that are hindering what you want to fucking do? What do you want to do? Hell yeah. And I guess that's, that's it. I like that. And one more thing, like, where does this, like, that positive mindset come from? Have you always been like that, or is this something you have to, you have to work on? Well, okay. It's, I feel like this sounds so dark when I say it, and I, I hate that it sounds like that, but I feel like a lot of people go through this. Like, I want to kill myself, like, a lot. You know, like, there are so many days where I'm just like, I fucking hate my life, I want to kill myself. Mm -hmm. But... At the same time, you can flip that and be like, 
fuck it. If that's like how low I can get, then everything is meaningless and nothing means anything. You know, and you can either give that a pessimistic, nihilistic sort of like fuck, or you could do whatever the fuck you want and make yourself as happy as you want because you deserve it. Heck yeah. It is a flip flop. I'm not always as happy, but today I'm as happy. And, uh, and I love to hear that. And on your dark days, just remember it always gets better and yeah. you'll make it through. And I appreciate you coming here and like having this interview. And I think Cash appreciates you coming too. And like I said, this is Marsco Media. This is the great Teha Cat. She's the best. She's like the best singer on the North Shore. You heard her, you heard her out of my mouth. I don't care what anybody else says. She's going crazy, and there's more stuff coming from her. And go listen to Waste My Time. That's my favorite song by Teha. Stream it. And stream, stream it. All platforms. All platforms. Marsco Media. We're out of here. Triple got the sauce.